all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the mor for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought or for the things of itself. Sufficient on the unto the day is the evil thereof. Jesus Christ is actually revealing unto us that to be worried is a sign that you have a little faith. And those who worry about basic basic needs were supposed to be unbelievers because they have a father who does not care for them but we believers in Christ Jesus we do have a heavenly father who does care for us hence we ought to have faith even as little children who do not worry even of what if they would eat but they, they, they know with full assurance that their father will bring food for them to eat. So we also ought to have similar type of faith. This is why Jesus Christ said on, in Matthew chapter 19 verse 14, But Jesus said, suffer the little, suffer little children and forbade them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And if ever there is something that is trying to bother you, you need to commit such thing unto God through prayer so that it becomes the preoccupation of your heavenly father. It becomes the preoccupation of God and that you remain free of any worry for this is the will of God for you. Hence the word of God says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And the word of God adds in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Thus, God wants you to have peace of mind. And this is why Jesus Christ said the following to his, unto his disciples, which includes you as well. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Your mind and your heart should be free of any anxiety or worry. But you should rather fill your mind with what the following verse of the book of Philippians tells us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So being free, having peace of mind, peace of heart, being free of anxiety, of worry. This is the second pillar of the stability God wants us to have. So let us go on to Zilpah. Zilpah was the fourth wife of Jacob. And she represents the fourth foot of of the table of shoe bread in other terms she represents the fourth pillar of the stability god wants us want, want to give unto his people that we are and the name zilpa means a trickling in other words streaming dripping in other words flow in small stream come go or appear slowly or gradually this implies that it may be a little it may be little or very small at the beginning but it will surely come surely it will be completed as long as God is involved all the way through you will surely achieve it as long as it is God who has moved your hand to start it and this is well depicted in what God said to the governor Zerubbabel through the prophet Zechariah as they were rebuilding the temple of God after they had returned to the land of Judah from their captivity of Babylon in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 8 to 10 which says moreover the word of, of the Lord came unto me saying the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house 
that will be the temple of God. His hands shall also finish it. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. These are the eyes of the Lord who run to and fro through the whole earth. Hence, through the meaning of the name Zilpa, God is telling us that though what is doing in your life, what is doing in our life may seem insignificant at the beginning, we must not despise it. For it will surely have its outstanding impact as God will cause it to complete. Thus God is calling you to be patient. Hence, the fourth pillar of the stability God would like us to have it is for us to be patient. Is is patience. For the word of God says in Psalm 37 verse 7 to 9, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. This means that those who learn to wait patiently upon God will surely inherit blessings. Those who will wait patiently upon the Lord will indeed see that deliverance even as, as David did. And he therefore declared in Psalm 40 verse 1 to 3 saying, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the merry clay and set my feet upon a rope and established my going and he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God, many shall see it and fear, shall trust and shall trust in the Lord. If you want to walk with God and be successful, you need to learn to be patient. Every person that God used who had a tremendous impact during their lifetime were people who had patience. They learned to wait patiently on, on God. Abraham waited 25 years to see the promise of God of a son to come to be to be uh, for, for the son to come to be with the birth of Isaac. Joseph had to wait 22 years to see the dream that God gave him to come to pass when his 11 brothers bowed down before him as he was then the second in command in the whole land of Egypt just behind Pharaoh. Moses had to wait for 40 years in the land of Midian before God used him to deliver the people of Israel from the slavery of Egypt. It took 15 years to David to actually become king from the time God instructed Samuel to anoint him to be king in the place of King Saul. When we can see all these people, we can notice that they had an outstanding work with God because they learned to be patient with God. For God knows what he's doing and he knows what he has in store for you and when it is the appropriate time for you to possess what he has promised you and this is why god said the following through the prophet jeremiah in jeremiah 29 verse 11 saying for i know the thought that i think towards you says the lord thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end patience is used to denote faithfulness patience is used to evaluate faithfulness in someone and when someone wants to make haste when someone wants to hurry in his way to the promise of God he will end up becoming corrupt he will end up corrupting his way before God and the 
book of Proverbs state in Proverbs 28 verse 20, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Why? Because he will corrupt his ways. But when you trust God for something, you thus wait for it with patience. Even as the word of God says in Romans chapter 8 verse 25, but if we hope for what we see not, then we do with patient wait for it. And God concludes through the prophet Isaiah to say in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hence, these are the four pillars that we need to have in order for us to acquire the stability that God has in store for us for this year. First, we must not be weary of seeking the face of God, of seeking the presence of God, of, of, of we must not be weary of prayer. We must not be weary to meditate the word of God, to do, we must not be weary in the things of God. We must not be weary in doing the, the will of God. We must not be weary of serving God. The second pillar, we must be in everlasting covenant with God. The third pillar, we need to learn. We need to make sure that we are free of worry. We are free of anxiety. Our heart must have peace. We must have peace of mind. Whatever is trying to trouble you, give it unto God. Let it become the preoccupation of God. And you remain free of worry. The fourth pillar, we need to learn to be patient. We need to have patience. Patience with God. For surely, God will bring it to pass. It may be small, it will come to be. It will have the uh, expected impact that it's supposed to have. God will beautify it in His time. So we want to pray. Abba Father, Almighty God, Yahweh, the only true God, we thank you for the revelation of your word. Thank you for entrusting us with knowledge and understanding. As it is your desire to give to your people that we are stability in life. We pray unto you, O oh God, that we that you you you, you cause us to grasp these four pillars of stability in the name of Jesus Christ, so that we may come to fulfill what you have called us to achieve upon the face of the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hence, we pray unto you, Heavenly Father, that you give us strength with your people so that we may never stop seeking you. Let us not be weary to seek your face in prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that you may make us your people to never be weary of the affairs of your kingdom. Let your people that we are never be tired to pray unto you. Never be tired to meditate upon your word day and night. Let us never be weary to share your word with others and to witness about the salvation that is found in Jesus Christ. We ask it of you in the name of Jesus Christ. But rather, cause your people that we are 
to be weary of sin to the point that we completely forsake it in the name of Jesus Christ. May you move every one of your people to be in everlasting covenant with you. Even as Abraham called upon your name in Beersheba, El Olam, the everlasting God. Even so, let us be in an everlasting covenant with you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we, that we may be, or that you may become a well of salvation and cause us to drink of your fountain of the water of life, that we may have everlasting life in the name of Jesus Christ. And let us be like a water garden. A spring of water whose water never fails in the name of Jesus Christ. Thus we pray, may you supply to all our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Be our Bethsheba, a fountain of life, a fountain of provision in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray also that you give us peace of mind in the name of Jesus Christ, peace of heart, so that we may not be weary or anxious about anything in life, but that we truly, we fully trust in you like little children trust unto their father. For you are our, indeed our heavenly father who truly care for us. Hence, let our heart and mind be free of any worries. From any worry in the name of Jesus Christ. But let us rather turn into prayer whatsoever thing that would like to try to preoccupy our mind or heart. Thus, according to your word, we therefore cast our care upon you, for you do care for us. And let your peace, which passes all understanding, keep our heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And may you give us the grace to be patient as we walk with you in our respective journey of faith, trusting you fully that the good things that you have started in us, you will indeed perfect it in the name of Jesus Christ. Even though it may seem to be very little at the beginning, help us not to despise it, but rather wait patiently on you, for you will surely beautify it in the name of Jesus Christ. We therefore thank you for hearing us and for answering us accordingly. May you be forever exalted, you the King of kings, the King of glory. You are forever magnified. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.